you think you know where I'm going with this, but I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Because, yes, I could just go the whole route of LOL, Kotaku sucks, you know, oh, they're going under all these changes. It looks like it could be the end of the road for them. Good, they deserve it, something like that. Like, a lot of people have been, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't want to go that direction. I like to go against the grain a little bit. I like to look at things from a different perspective and maybe try to look a bit more at the overall picture instead of the short-sighted picture, because I think this Kotaku situation that's currently happening right now is more... More indicative of games journalism as a whole and kind of talks about like why it's kind of in this volatile state that it's in in 2024 so i want to go over all this stuff it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster no this has nothing to do with my situation with kotaku i don't care i i wish them all luck Alyssa. i wish i wish you luck you don't like me that that's cool you know i just wanted to defend myself make my video i go my own way now because I, i've said what i needed to say but no this has nothing to do with it because if anything I might actually be a bit nice towards Kotaku with this. So here's what's happening. Basically, a few days ago, of course, Kotaku's editor-in-chief announced that she will be leaving Kotaku as there are some changes incoming that she did, editorial changes, I believe was the term, that she did not agree with. So she is leaving the, the role as editor-in-chief. Of course, when someone that is a, a higher up person in the hierarchy of a website, people are going to be talking about it. Um, you know, fellow colleagues came out and talked about it. Some people that even worked at Kotaku and the whole thing, you know, it, it, a lot of people say, oh, it's because of the sweet baby article or whatever. But I, I really don't think it was because when you actually look at the information that's been provided, they're more so not focusing on news anymore but they want to focus on guides. And this is coming from the corporate people, the higher up people. They want Kotaku to focus on guides for games because I guess YouTube and game facts like doesn't exist anymore or something like that. But they want that to be the focus so much. In fact, that they want a small team to write 50 guides a week, 50 guides a week. And th that's kind of crazy to me because that that's a lot of work because especially if we're talking about newer games, like you would have to like be taking a log of everything as you're doing it while you're playing this game, seeing if it's something that people are even interested in, you know, as far as this guide is concerned, because obviously not all guides, you know, some are complete walkthroughs, some are side quest walkthroughs, stuff like that. But that's obviously, you know, a large shift because Kotaku, you know, they do a lot of news and whether you're talking about gaming news or pop culture news, like, yeah, they cover a lot of news related stuff and they just sometimes sprinkle in their own personal feelings into it which kind of murkies the water and so of course because of this a lot of people think that Kotaku's going down the drain everyone's gonna jump ship and you know it's an easy little victory dance because Kotaku Polygon places like this you know do they really have a place in in modern day gaming it depends on the person, I guess. For me personally, I, I don't really need them except when I need to laugh at them for making dumb ideas. But I go back to the bigger picture situation because it's like, how did we get here? How did we get here to this state of where a lot of people consider games journalism to be a joke? Because it used to not be like that. It used to be you know, a pretty exclusive thing to be able to do that. And if you're in like your early 20s or something like that, none of this is going to resonate with you. But if you're an old cat like me, you know, you're in your mid 30s, maybe your early 40s, late 40s or whatever, like you'll understand where I'm coming from with this because games journalism started with magazines. You know, think back into the 90s and, you know, with video game magazines, you had places like EGM, you had GamePro, Next Generation. What was one thing that those magazines had? Personalities. You know, when you read a copy of EGM and you're looking at reviews, you have multiple people that are doing the reviews, but you know their name. This is Sushi X's review. This is Dan Shu's review. This is John Riccardi's review. When you look at something like GamePro, you have, you know, Scary Larry and stuff like that. There were these personalities that maybe if you didn't agree with everything that they said, you could kind of understand what kinds of games they liked and what sort of stuff they liked and what sort of sort sort of stuff that they weren't like super interested in. So you could kind of gauge, you know, this person's personality and they were very personality related things. And with the death 
of, you know, print magazines and moving on to the internet age, when it started out, you still had these personalities, you know, think about like one up, which I believe was actually then sucked into um, what we have with Kotaku now, but one up, there was a bunch of older, you know, journalists that were doing that. When you look at stuff like IGN in its infancy with like Matt Bozon and stuff like that, there were these individuals, these personalities, even God, this pains me to say it because screw Sessler, but even G4, same sort of thing. You had these personalities that you could identify with as far as how, what they thought of games and, you know, what their sort of style of game was. So you knew if it was kind of in line with what you were thinking, you were going to probably enjoy what they enjoyed. But as time went on, it got more corporate. Like, look at, look at how corporate video game journalism has gotten you know look at how just more of a machine it is than an organic thing like it was back in the day and like yeah there was corporate stuff going on with egm and game pro and i'm sure there's stories that could probably be told that sort of shine a light on that but it's so much more prevalent in this modern era because the editor-in-chief just left because they did a complete overhaul of how they want to do content on kotaku so what happened here's what happened here's what i think happened there's this idea that video games traditional video games journalism is like this this awesome job you know it's this it's this great job you make money you get all these opportunities you get this that or, or the other but you see it more and more so with so many modern gaming journalists where you look at their twitter account and it's like formerly of and it's like seven different places and it's like, well, is that because you suck ass or is that because there's something going on with the industry? And I think it's more so something going on with the industry. Nobody lasts anymore. Nobody sticks around on a website or something like that in order for you to get a relationship, you know, with that person. And I shouldn't say relationship, but in, in, an understanding of what they like, you know, you understand their writing style, you understand where they're coming from because, you know, the turnover rate is just so high. It's a volatile industry because you look at the corporate influence of it. Like I remember the whole, when IGN was hiring for a head Nintendo person and Philip Mewson ended up taking that job. They were like, oh yeah, you make, you know, 70 or 80 grand. And for someone, in games journalism, like that sounds like a lot of money. That sounds like a ton of money. So you're automatically going to be like, oh, well, I'll do whatever for that. I'll do whatever for that. Not taking into account that it's in California. Not taking into account that in California, especially where you have to work in the Bay Area, which means you have to live in the Bay Area, that's like nothing. So I almost feel like it's a, it's a predatory thing because the money while it, it seems like it's there because of what you have to do and where you have to be it's not really there and so what ends up happening is you know you get it's not about getting the best person or whatever it's about getting a person it's about getting whoever you can to fill this role to keep the website going because you don't necessarily care about the quality of the content you just care that the website is going because you're, you're a corporate figure you don't understand the gaming landscape and when you have competition from individuals when you have the rise of youtube and stuff like that and the rise of independent people who don't need a backing of a large company or a corporation like you look at a lot of these gaming journalists like twitters and stuff like that the only time you ever really hear about these people is when they do something silly or when they make a controversial statement or something like that. And then a bunch of people focus in on them, but it doesn't last. You know, people don't care about that. Like, yes, there are still some traditional journalists that I think do a good job, but they're mostly people that have been established in the industry and that have created a path for themselves. You have so much negativity from a lot of gaming journalists. I saw a tweet um, the other day with someone saying, oh, well, when Kotaku goes down, where's all these YouTubers going to read off their news sites from? I hate you all. It's like, bro, if you think that the YouTube sphere is so easy that anyone could just get on here and read an article for a from a website and like that just be it and make money, then why wouldn't you do it?
You know, if, if it's so easy to build a brand, to to cultivate your brand, to do all this all the time, why don't you do it? Because I guarantee you, you can make more money doing YouTube than you can working for a corporation. I guarantee it. But you got to have a personality. You got to have something that people latch on to. And there's a lot of luck involved in it. Like, no, it's not... It's not a hard job in and of itself, but it's a time consuming thing. It's kind of easier just to go to a job where you work a nine to five in the games journalism sphere. And when you get off work, you don't have to worry about stuff like that. But when it's your own entity, you know, it's a little different. It's definitely it's your lifeblood. So you treat it like a constant thing. But I really feel like the, the, the downfall of Kotaku and the downfall of the games journalism side of things is just because. Well, I shouldn't say just because, because yes, yeah, some of these stupid takes definitely play a role, but I feel like the bigger impact is these corporations that are just hiring anyone who's willing to work for what they deem an acceptable wage. So you're not getting the cream of the crop. You're not getting the best people available because these people don't have an identity. They don't have a name. They don't have a large following on social media. Nobody knows who they are. So they rely on the brand to hopefully propel them into something else or higher up the food chain but nine times out of ten it doesn't happen so they get stuck in this rut they get stuck in this thing and they end up going to the next job and the next job and the next job i i don't honestly think it's just all bad takes that are messing with games journalism i, I think it's just there's a lot there's so many more factors that people aren't thinking about with this and I feel like I laid them out pretty decently in this video, but I mean, you know, let me know what you think of it in the comments section. I, if you are at Kotaku and you, you left because of the switch or you lost your job or something like that, or you quit, I hope you land on your feet. You know, I, I everyone should be able to make a, a, a living wage. You know, everyone should be able to, to, to work a job if they want to work for it. Maybe maybe you shouldn't be in video games journalism, but I mean, you know, there's, I hope you land on your I'm just kidding. Um, but I do hope you land on your feet. Like, you know, it's never cool to, to see that sort of stuff happening. But, you know, you got to think of the bigger picture with stuff like this. And I feel like I'm the old man, you know, that Simpsons thing. An old man's talking, everyone. And they gather around the lemon tree. I kind of feel like that right now. But hey, if I can spit a little knowledge for you and you learn something from it, that's cool. But know your worth, value yourself. Um, and yeah, it's hectic out there. Let me know what you think of this in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.